Okay, so today we will continue with our uh, imaging gallery on the causes of bowel wall thickening. You can, <coughs> yalla, Dr. Sabah. <coughs> so, what do you think? What's going on here? Okay. So there is diffuse circumferential wall thickening. You can see here, and surrounding fast surrounding here. Also, you can notice what the colon is involved here. The ascending colon, the descending colon, even the ascending colon is involved. Okay. So this uh, is a young age patient. What do you think? Young patient. What would you put as a differential diagnosis or diffuse bowel wall? Any younger twenties, method. Ulcerative and ulcer. Any you mean ulcerative? Yes. Okay. What else? Okay. Ulcerative colitis. You would expect the colon to be involved more than the small bowel. Right, the colon in a continuous manner, but here you can see there there is some parts of the small bowel also involved, not only the colon. So, Crohn's is another possibility. Diffuse it will be difficult. Diffuse tumor, the whole colon. Tumor is focal, apple core lesion, not diffuse. Okay, so this was a case of Crohn's disease. Good job. So, the other service. What do you think is going on? This is something here. <laughs> okay. Good. First of all, you can notice there is some bowel wall thickening here and here, okay? There is some fat surrounding, right? And you have this thing here, which is the same as this thing here. What's this? Okay, it's on the anti-mesenteric border, right? So it's a, not a diverticulum, it's a pseudo-diverticulum, okay? And this patient is with the Crohn's disease, okay? It's a pseudo, there is a Crohn, the patient has the Crohn disease and he has a pseudo diverticulum with the anti mesenteric border. Okay, secondary to the Crohn disease. And you can see thickening of the bowel wall uh, and some stranding of the surrounding fat planes. Again, this is a case of Crohn's disease. Okay, good job. Zed, yellow media, what do you think is going on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see that descending colon, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the whole thing has a circumferential wall thickening, and you can see this target appearance is very obvious here. Okay, the contrast in the lumen and some decreased density of the submucosa due to some fatty infiltration. And there is nothing else. Just the colon is diffusely thick. This would indicate what? Ulcerative colitis would be number one, of yes. course. Diffuse. The whole colon is involved in a continuous manner. And keep in mind, ulcerative colitis has a high risk of changing into uh, colon carcinoma and should be treated by total colectomy as a, uh, <laughs> to prevent future degeneration into a carcinoma. Okay? Good job. Yalla Inas. What do you think is going on here? Um, uh, So this is a barium enema first, showing narrowing of the lumen 
okay. forming a descending colon and part of the transverse, transverse colon, colon. Exactly. Uh, with the, uh, this is called featureless colon. Featureless. It's a lead pipe it's, colon. It's okay. Typical for ulcerative colitis. And you can see that it is a continuous pattern, no skip lesions. It starts from the rectum and goes up straight, no skip lesions. That's a big difference from Crohn's disease. Crohn's has skip lesions. Some areas normal, some areas abnormal, normal, abnormal. And you can see and you can see on the CT there is polyps, or in this case pseudopolyps. Okay? Typical for ulcerative colitis. Okay. So, yalla Dina, what do you think is going on? Okay. <laughs> Maybe this fecal material, most likely, rather than a mass. Well, do you think diverticulosis or diverticulitis will be in the ascending column? Keep in mind, this is the ascending column. Usually, it is the sigmoid, rectum, rectosigmoid, descending, things like that, on the left side, not on the right side more. Okay. Excellent. Always keep that in mind. So, when you are thinking of diphlitis, you should ask of what? Immune state. Is the patient is immune, stop, talk, uh, immune compromised or not? I will tell you, yes, this patient is immune compromised due to chemotherapy. So this will be highly suggestive of tephlitis, which is there is moderate circumferential wall thickening of the cecum and the surrounding fat stranded with nematosis and some contrast material seen in the cecal wall. Okay, this is typical features of tephlitis when you see it, especially in young age group on the right side, on the cecum and the ascending colon. Patient should be neutropenic. Okay, it's called neutropenic tephlitis. You ask about, before you say tephlitis, if you want to show the examiner that you are so confident, <laughs> what's the immune status of the patient? The examiner will know that you know everything and that's it. It's passed. Okay? Zin. Yalla. Ala. What do you think? It's a little bit not straightforward. Okay. This is the rectum. You can see there's a severe thickening, marked thickening of the rectal wall, numen narrowing, okay? And you can see the fat surrounding the rectum is what? It's stranded, it's edematous. It's not very clearly seen. You don't see the rectum like that usually. You see the rectum surrounded by a large amount of fat, of clear fat, okay? So you have a big differential diagnosis here. Anything that affects the rectum, like ulcerative colitis, like tumor, like especially with one image. Okay, I know. Okay, like uh, proctitis. Even though, uh, what else? A lot of differential diagnosis. However, here uh, it was an inflammatory pseudo tumor. <coughs> Keep that in mind. Inflammatory pseudo tumor is just inflammation, big <laughs> severe inflammation that looks like a tumor. When you see that, there is mass in the rectum, and no one can blame you. Of course, it looks like a mass in the rectum, and you need a biopsy to confirm. In this case, it was proctitis, inflammation, inflammatory pseudo tumor. Okay? I really don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Okay. This is a little bit not very uh, well, not very straightforward. So, anyone? Yalla Hibbert, what do you see? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the bowel here. The wall is thickened. Okay. Okay. Showing some contrast enhancement, wall thickening, and you can see some area of. No, this is hypo dense or non enhancing area in the kidney indicating infarction, focal infarction of the kidney, focal, just part of it. So, there is wall thickening in the, in the small bowel with infarction. If I 
tell you this patient is a known case of long-standing disease. Ischemic what? Colitis. It's decades colon, which is not involved here. I tell you, long-standing disease. Ischemia is an acute disease. Vasculitis. It's a kind of vasculitis. Amyloidosis should be an elder age group. This is a young patient. Okay? We think of amyloidosis in relatively older. Anyway, so it can be any kind of vasculitis. Okay? In this case, it was SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. But again, you can't say just, you don't, you, no one can know this is a SLE. You just say vasculitis and that's it. You leave it alone. Okay? And even if you say just vasculitis, it's much more than enough. Okay? Again, Another case, this is a child, okay, with bowel pain, abdominal pain and things like that, sorry. So, what do you think is going on? Minu Ba'ad? Yalla, Aryan. Khali shwayin, say a refreshment. Okay. CT abdomen, axial section showing. Thickening of the bowel wall of the jejunum, small bowel mainly. Okay. And what? Surrounding of the surrounding fat planes. Okay. Some free fluid. Yes, I agree. There is some ascites. What else? And there is diffuse hyperattenuating, wall thickening of the more distal jejunal loops. You can see this jejunal loops here, all of them are thick and increasing in uh, any hyperattenuating. In a child with some skin lesions, what do you think? Mm, there is no neurofibromas, no masses here, just thickening of the bowel. Hyaluronic preparation. Keep it in mind in child with abdominal pain, skin lesions, some ascites, some bowel wall thickening. Keep that in mind. We have we see a lot of hyaluronic line, especially by ultrasound, not by CT. Okay, so this can be a way of presenting hyaluronic line purpura. Okay. Yes, sure. There is a risk of interception in these cases. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Could have. What what gas in the bowel? So, it's due to thickening rather than ischemia. Thickening of the bowel wall, the air bubbles will be trapped within the rather than the bowel wall itself. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, did we? What we happened? Oh. So this what do we see here again? It's small bowel wall thickening. Okay circumferential, diffuse, and this patient has a history of transplantation. What do you think is going on? Acute graft versus host disease, okay, in this case. Acute graft versus host disease, the patient has having a rejection, and uh, this uh, was uh, presented as diffuse thickening uh, of the bowel wall with ascites, okay? <laughs> Another case of acute graft versus host disease, you can see also the marked hyperattenuation of the uh, small bowel wall and consistent with I mean, contrast uh, being trapped in the small bowel. Okay, and you can see there's marked ascites with history of recent transplant. You should keep in mind acute graft versus host disease. Okay, so. Can, would anyone like to try something here? Yalla sabah. What do you think? This is a six-year-old child with long-standing history. <coughs> so you can see circumferential wall thickening in the small bowel loops here. Okay. And you can see the spleen, it's it's enlarged, the inferior pole is reaching just at the level of the kidney. Yeah. 
and on the ultrasound you can see this is the liver and this is the pyloric canal it's markedly thickened okay extending to the jejunum this is a six year old so don't think of pyloric stenosis think of something else with a long standing history so anyway it's not that easy but just give it a try what do you think is going on here in this case we can put a differential a lot of differential like what you can put uh, leukemia for example you can splenomegaly lymphoma you can myelofibrosis all of these kinds of diseases okay blood disorders Pyrus patches are not in the duodenum, are in the, re, in, uh, in the ileum, okay, at the end, exact opposite end of the small bowel, okay. So, in this case was chronic granulomatous disease, chronic granulomatous disease, okay. Anyway, it's again one of these blood disorders. You don't have specific diagnosis, you only can't have this, oh, I know about the time, I'm <laughs> not there. Anyway, this, what's going on here? Pyloric canal, there is diffuse concentric hypodense thickening of the small bowel and the uh, adjacent part of the stomach and the antrum causing luminal narrowing with hypodense appearance of the serosa. You can see the serosa here. It's relatively hypodense, the outer layer. Okay. <coughs> so this patient presented with eosinophilic gastroenteritis. This has an eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Okay. You can see thickening of the bowel wall of the stomach, extending to the stomach to the antrum, and hypodense and the serosa is not very well seen. Okay. For the sake of time, I'm just trying to go a little bit faster. So this patient has a congenital heart disease and Down syndrome. What do you think is going on? So indicating. No, no, no. gas here in the wall of the stomach and air fluid levels and nematosis extending to the duodenum okay with wall thickening fluid full duodenum <coughs> huh? diffuse nematosis in the atrial wall in patients with congenital heart disease down syndrome ischemia you should think of ischemia exactly this is ischemic bowel okay you can see the nematosis in the wall the distended stomach extended to the duodenum here and here and you can see the marked wall thickening okay indicating ischemia what's going on here spot diagnosis interception exactly there's an interception in the lower uh, part of the small bowel and it was uh, due to a polyp polyp here was the leading point you can see bowel within bowel appearance okay What's going on here? Last case? Appendicitis. Appendicitis. Excellent. This was a markedly inflamed, enlarged appendix with surrounding, surrounding <laughs> fat planes. And it is a part of the bowel, the appendix, after all. So it is uh, one of the differential of bowel wall thickening. Okay? And if it's severe enough, it might lead to paralytic ileus. You, some, you see some bowel distension. You might see some free fluid. If it is perforated, you look for collections in the pelvis or areas surrounding the cecum. Okay, so again, it's another cause of bowel uh, wall thickening. Thank you very much.